And we have a lot of corrosion to address and some machine pin sips to remove. This is going to be fun. And about four hours of a lot of fun later, we have this. On the bench, a Data East early revision of the Data East MPU. And it had some alkaline corrosion on it, and I rolled in the pics of what it looked like before. So all that has been taken care of by sanding to bare copper, rebuilding traces as required, conformal coating, and then repopulating with brand new parts. So this one took some parts. I replaced the 6802 processor. I installed NVRAM, and of course there's new sockets there. The entire reset section had to come out, including that four megahertz crystal, no, eight megahertz crystal. And uh, I put a few of these wire loops back on that are important, the five volts and ground. And then there's one for blanking up there above the crystal. The uh, solenoid section worked fine. The uh, switch matrix section did not. Column four was inoperative and I looked down at it. I replaced this transistor now, but I looked down at that transistor and I saw that. I don't know if you can see that, but it blew the top right off of that 2N3904, I think it is. And the special solenoid section was ugly, but functional, so it stays like it is. So let's boot it up. I'll show you what the LEDs look like upon boot. And we are booted up. And the lamp matrix is doing what it does like I've got a uh, connector, a little hinky up here. Let me fix that. No hinky connector. There was a hinky setting. I had set this to the wrong uh, setting. I set it to Williams uh, Data East Discrete instead of Data East Standard. And we know from Mr. Victor's research, etc., that these displays work differently. So this is bo this board is booting just fine. I've got Simpsons ROMs in it right now, or Simpson ROM. I converted it to a single ROM configuration. The the actual game ROM is a Secret Service, but uh, I don't have a sound ROM board set for Secret Service. So here we go with Simpsons. Nothing on the solenoids right now. These two. This is my new solenoid. Uh, tester board from Victor. It's pretty cool. It supports Data East, Williams, and a couple of early Williams games, Pinbot and F14. So let's get into test. Sounded like an AM radio personality there. I'm going to turn off this light so we can see a little bit better. Oh, I was going to make myself another button so I could demonstrate these a little easier. Did you have to flip the hey man, we're both underachievers. flipper buttons to walk through these menus? So the sound commands are working just fine. And you can see display test is working just fine. Let's go to switch test. So I'm going to walk through the diagonals like this on my tester. And we'll make sure that column four, the one I repaired, is fully operational. And that is it. And what I like about Data East boards is they always report all 64 switches. No active switches. Makes sense. The crazy Data East lamp matrix test. Then you can do rows, columns, and individual lamps. So I'm going to skip that. Flashers. Ooh, that blue one is still too bright. I'm going to have to tone that down. And then there's coils. So you'll see a green LED light. Then the yellow LED light. And then the red LED light. And the only coil that doesn't have a C side on with the Simpsons ROMs is coil 5. 
that bright yellow light corresponds to my day to east indicator over here. Now, normally we'd be seeing the special solenoids driven from this CPU, but this is called a reflexive CPU and it is missing a 7407. It's not missing, it's not supposed to be there. Uh, they didn't start putting those on to Data East MPUs until, uh, I think it's called Revision 3, but there's a 7407 here that makes it possible for the CPU to drive the special solenoids. Now, I can drive them from the switches, of course, and we can show that those are all working correctly. That's a beautiful thing. These two orange ones, which I did just tone down, those are the flipper uh, ground enable relay. Next test. We could do an individual coil. We're not. And then the board reboots. Now I've put it into free play. It looks like I've changed the ROM. Oh, I did. I changed. I put the Secret Service ROM in. And that, of course, causes it to reinitialize the RAM memory. So I will put the Secret Service ROM in and make sure it boots because that's what's going what's going back into the game. But this board is good to go. Folks, change your batteries. Get NVRAM installed. Something. I don't like working on corrosion. Have a great week, folks. Thank you so much.